Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Welcome to Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast, formerly Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Um, <clears throat> today is January 13th, 2021, uh, and all kinds of craziness happening in 2021. Uh, we, it's funny, we, we just, uh, you know, went into an election where things were speeding up and we thought we'd get a break afterwards and it's just getting crazier and crazier. But before we end any of that, um, I want to introduce the panel to you all today. Uh, so in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our lower right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. Uh, pilot in the state of California and just in from a hot landing. So he's uh, <laughs> sitting in the cockpit. So. <laughs> and in our lower... Smooth. Uh, <laughs> smooth. Okay. Uh, that's got to be a first for California. Anything kind of a smooth landing. Hot and, hot and smooth. Hot and smooth. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I've had some, uh, some teeth jarring landings myself. So plenty of that. <laughs> Okay, well, and then in our lower left-hand corner, we have a special guest on our panelists today, uh, Kalish Moreau. She is a uh, city council uh, woman in the city of Hanford in California, and so a newly minted city council woman. She was just elected in 2020, so she's got a lot of inter interesting perspective to add to us today as well. So jumping into uh, things, 2021, you know, wow, it's just become a political storm, a political storm of storming the Capitol building. Uh, you know, we've all watched it uh, to some degree unfold. And, um, you know, it all stemmed from that vote counting issue, you know, of whether or not the voting was legit or not. And, you know, the uh, uh, people eventually descended on the Capitol, some more or less blaming Trump to different degrees for this. But, uh, you know, it literally... Uh, breaching the barriers of, of the Capitol building and, you know, while with a few people dead. And um, uh, so anyways, it's uh, it looks like 2021 is starting out on a really tough note. Uh, you guys want to jump in on any of this? Uh, you know, well, well, nobody, nobody could, um, could support or defend this thing that happened in Washington, D.C. It came out of Trump's rally. There were some very loose statements made at the rally. And some of these people took it as some kind of call to arms, I guess. And they end up storming the Capitol. Nobody could defend that. But what is bothering me here right now is the stench of hypocrisy. It's nauseating. All summer long, all summer long, we had Black Lives Matter and Antifa burning down our cities, including here in California. Some of these governors and some of these Democrats were encouraging it. The magnificent mile in Chicago was looted. A, a federal building in um in Portland was almost set on fire with people in it. We're talking about attempted murder here. All of this was going on all summer long. You know what? Nobody was complaining about it. But now we have the Trump supporters doing something which was illegal, something which was criminal conduct, and I hope they're prosecuted and they're sent to prison. But now the Democrats find religion. We find religion now. Oh my God, it's horrible. It's horrible. When our cities were going, it didn't matter. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah, I, 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 it's I, I, I didn't see any signs there for defund the police during the middle of that run. Exactly. Yeah, we missed that. I didn't see that either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the, the death of the, the girl from San Diego, um, you know, my town. And... Uh, uh, interested just from the standpoint of, uh, you know, how they're going to handle that. Uh, so, um, you know, and I'm not saying I know anything one way or the other. I don't. But, uh, you know, it, it's just it's just a tragic uh, sequence of events. Um, I, I don't know what to say, honestly. And Leon said everything needs to be said, I think. Uh, I agree with him. So, I don't know. Kalish, you got anything uh you've heard or or you would like to say yeah it you know i i'm kind of at that that outrage fatigue over everything you know it's like like you're saying like we had all this you know 
crap going on all summer long and the, the, the riots and everything being, um, you know, just dangerous riots, violence, those kinds of things happening. And, it, and it's just, it's overwhelming. And then you start hearing, well, it's this group and it's that organization. And, and you know, it just, it's really convoluted too. And, you know, for me, when I was running for, for off, like, you know, I just basically had to just focus on what I could, ha what I could actually do and change and whatever. And that was basically run for office, keep focused on that, um, you know, and, and try to navigate COVID and stuff. So like, you know, I've reached outrage fatigue. And then when everything happened at the Capitol, it was like, go figure. We, we knew that this was, I do find it interesting that the, when the election results came in that Trump didn't win, we had a bunch of these Republicans going like, hey, we, our guy didn't win, but you didn't see us out there looting and being violent or anything like that. And I'm just like, yeah, just wait. And, you know, that, that didn't age well. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, go ahead, Tim. I was just going to say, uh, Kalish was more prescient than I was because, uh, you know, I didn't expect this to happen. I was, you know, I, I was uh, confident that, uh, you know, if, uh, if it continued on and it turned out that Donald Trump was uh, the loser indeed and that uh, there wouldn't be any kind of, uh, you know, this kind of thing going on from, you know, the Republican side. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I can't say that now. Um, uh, as Kalisha has, has pointed out, that's all. Go ahead, Jason. But you see, but you see there, is a, there is a fringe element, to be honest. I mean, 99.9% .9 of uh, Donald Trump supporters are good, decent people, okay, and stuff like that. Yeah, as you guys know, I voted for him. Yeah. They are good, decent people, but there's a fringe not element. Not element not 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 that not that horrible. That. <laughs> yeah, the basket, the basket are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but well, there's a fringe were... element that walk, that runs around with the Trump campaign. And this is why I think Trump should have been a little more careful when they were speaking at that rally um, on, on um, last week, Wednesday. He should have been a little more careful. If you think about it, Rudy Giuliani got up and said, we have to have trial by combat. That is not a good thing to be saying at a rally where people are all worked up and all mad about the election results. I am mad at the election results, but I ain't gonna storm no capital for nobody. Believe me, I ain't doing that, okay? Then Donald Trump said, we have to march to the capital and we have to show strength. Now, I would think strength by numbers. That's what I would think. But some little fools standing up there gonna think, well, this is time, this is a call to arms. This is a call to arms. And here we have. So the point is though, the point is though, I think Trump should have been a little more careful and some of these other speakers, should have been a little more careful with their words. So I could see why these people are now talking, well, you know, you really incited the crowd and this is what we end up with, with, with the result, unfortunately. Leon, wouldn't Trump being careful with his words be like a first ever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why so now? <laughs> well, well, Jason, come on. You know there's the first time there, everything, right? So maybe this will be time for Trump to show his first time, all right? <laughs> I, I think it's funny that, you know, for the last four years, uh, you know, basically everybody, including Republicans, have been like, can somebody just take Twitter away from Trump? And it's like the last days they finally take Twitter away from Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I know they should have done that a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that you, uh, and I think Kalish, you kind of mentioned it uh, earlier, but I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, kind of what happens when one side loses and, you know, whether or not they buy it and all that. And, you know, as a libertarian or somebody who's kind of associated with libertarians for the last eight or 12 years or so, I, you know, it's, I find it amazing that, you know, when we lose almost every single time, we didn't lose in Hanford this last year, but otherwise we lose almost every single time. I mean, if you vote libertarian, you know, you get one or 2% of the vote and then you watch somebody that you have a lot of reservations about going into office and <laughs> to peacefully go through this every year. But, you know, when one, you literally had the state of denial for the left for four years that he won and even, even to the point of, uh, you know, impeachment and everything else and now that trump has lost 
suddenly it's, you know, it's a complete state of denial about, you know, uh, going forward with things, you know, of, of leaving office uh, to some degree. I mean, I guess he's going to leave office, but, you know, uh, you know, essentially claiming he's won by a landslide. <laughs> no, I mean, even if you were on his side on this, you, you've got to clearly say, okay, maybe somehow we, we somehow technically won, you know, if, if there was some dishonesty there. But we didn't win by a landslide. I mean, it's absolutely, you know, you have to be kind of delusional to think that. So I, you know, but it's it's just odd, you know. I mean, we sit here as libertarians and maybe, maybe hopefully the rest of the world can learn a little bit about us. Uh, or, I mean, from, us, uh, you know, managing to keep our heads together. But there were some libertarians, though, in that group that stormed the Capitol. And it's funny, you mentioned... Uh, uh, um, that one was in San Diego, Tim, and she was actually a registered libertarian and had been a military veteran as well. So, right. uh, yeah. but, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, let me just add on this landslide talk by Trump. Okay, fine. I don't know nothing about no landslide thing, okay? But I think, <laughs> but I think there are enough questions in enough states to really, to, for us to really question the results. Seriously. I know that's not a popular point of view nowadays because nowadays social media want to shut us down every time we say the, the so-called F word, I guess. Come on, for crying out loud. There's enough. I could sit down right here now and spend five minutes and show you guys some things that could be verified right now that raises serious questions. I could do that, but I wouldn't take the take up the show to explain that. But there's some serious issues that should be, should be investigated. Yeah. You know, there there was a, a time when uh uh uh, John Adams, the second president, was a young attorney, and he represented a, gr a group of represented a group of guys as a, as the uh, def the defendants in a trial. And it was they were very unpopular guys at the time in Boston, sure. and uh, and he won their acquittal for uh, crimes they were uh, accused of. And so uh, think about that. You know, there's a lot of times when you know you're not gonna be on the popular side and right. you, you would be right to be on uh, to be a uh, on the unpopular side so. sure indeed indeed good point indeed well speaking of popular and unpopular that's uh you know we're getting in kind of dangerous territory now where if you start voicing opinions that aren't popular you kind of get canceled and that's one right. of the sort of seeing like there was uh several republicans who were definitely um, standing by the point you were making, Leon, and now there is a push in Congress to, I think, have them removed by Cory Bush, I think, is the uh, um, congressman. And, and so, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, whether you uh, agree with them or not, I mean, that's the whole point of politics. I mean, you have literally a whole party that you may disagree with from time to time or individual members that you may disagree with, but then say, well, you know, they are claiming that there was, you know, illegitimacy in the election. We certainly heard a whole party claim that for the last four years. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and to say that these people have to be removed from one or the other, you know, if they're it just, I don't know. So what do yeah, you guys think about that? The Democrats tonight? have uh, short memories uh, because they forgot all about this Russian collusion that elected Trump in the first place. Okay? Exactly. So, you know, this, uh, exactly. This uh, so-called so -called Russian, uh, Russiagate thing. So uh, now all of a sudden they're, uh, you know, it's, it's just the same thing over and over and over. It's just 100 percent partisanship. Absolutely zero principles going on. It's just, you know, is my guy going to beat your guy? Well, if not, then, you know, okay, there's, okay, let's find a way to cheat to go around it, you know. So no wonder people think the election was stolen. Everybody's stealing elections right and left, uh, <laughs> or at least being accused of it. At least being yeah. accused of it. Yeah. You, know, you know, but it's kind of funny about this whole issue, you know. It's kind of funny about this whole issue. Mike Pence was presiding over a constitutional process to certify the vote. Part of that process means that you could object to the to the electors of certain of certain states. It's all within the constitutional process. It's all within law. But because certain senators, Josh Hawley from Missouri is a senator, Ted Cruz from Texas, because these people objected to the electors in certain states, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Uh, and, and, and other places, all of a sudden, these guys are some kind of demons that we need to expel 
or we need to somehow censure because they objected. And it is within, and it is within their constitutional right to do exactly that as legislators, as senators, as, as congressmen. They want to censure these people. They want to expel, I heard the word being used, expel these people because they objected to, to the electors in certain states. Some of those things needed to be objected to. But then you now we have these, these people, these Democrats who have found religion. Nancy Pelosi in 2016 said our election was hijacked by the Russians and Donald Trump. She said that on Twitter or something like that. But all of a sudden she finds religion. We cannot object now to the 2020 election. No, 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 we cannot do that. We no well, longer have rights. Um, Kalish, did anybody object to your being elected in your, uh, to your position? Uh, no, but th there's a small group that it, that is uh, very upset with me right now. And, it, you know, it, we're, we're touching on this, like, council culture and that kind of thing. And I, I feel like it's even, I, I prefer to call it outrage culture now at this point because there is yeah. just, so basically to back it up, I, I posted up something and it was like, it, it was a satirical post about the protest or not the protest, but the riots yeah. completely on my, my personal page and somebody, and I figured out who it was, you know, that, that, you know, and I unfriended them, but they took a screenshot of it and then shared it with this other group. And uh, it got completely obfuscated to the point where they all think that I was in favor of the riots and and so they just started you know it's like a few of them but they just started to try to attack me and they're they're messaging the mayor and all this stuff and they're like asking me to be removed from office because and, and like the crazy thing is i'm in agreement with them and i'm arguing yeah. with them how i'm in agreement with them and they want but they want me to apologize for the satirical post because it was inappropriate and all these things and i'm like i don't know what to tell you it was on my personal page uh, mm. i'm not gonna step down i'm in agreement with you <laughs> and it, it, it was just it's been the most in, insane thing oh, and, and by the way the, the most um entertaining post though was when i was accused of running as a libertarian to win the vote, and that I'm really a Republican. Gosh, literally, insanity knows no end. Insanity knows no end. Okay. Okay, and when I saw that message, I was actually at the Open Cal Now uh, conference and rally, and Cohen, I've gotten to know him really good over the last, you know, uh, several months, about a year now, and he was there, he's one of our speakers, and he he was, like, right next to me when I'm like, Spike, take a look at this, and he reads it, and he's like, please send that to me, I want to print it up, and I'm going to put it up as a poster in my room, be like, like an inspirational poster, <laughs> <laughs> well, Kalish, that's got to be the first time in history that somebody's ever accused a libertarian as running as a libertarian. <laughs> <You may. laughs> I, mean, I don't think that uh, even even Ron Paul ran as a Republican, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's true. He's a libertarian. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. And it, it, nobody is, apparently today, nobody is who they appear to be. Uh, you know, Trump is a Russian uh, tool, yes. um, uh, 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 and Antifa is um, actually not Antifa, but but the um, white supremacists and uh, the Trump supporters are Antifa, and you know everybody is somebody else, really. Of course, that, of that course, explains their yes. behavior. And yes. now we hear that uh, a libertarian really is a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's disappeared for a moment. Yeah. You've been disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to make, I don't even know where it cut off. It died all of it. But yeah. Then it was just like, and you're gone. <laughs> cancel culture canceled me right there. Exactly. <laughs> when, yeah. when, when you are, when you disappeared, when you disappeared there for a little bit, we thought social media was banning you. You know, cancel culture was at work real time. We thought there for yeah. a second. But. Speaking of which, that's an excellent segue to get into the uh, cancellation of Parlor and all of the people on Parlor. So uh, you know, 
uh, in getting into this whole thing with uh, Trump and you know some of the social media companies trying to cancel him. Um, and, you know, so he said, essentially told his supporters, hey, look, I'm going to move over to Parler. And so people literally started leaving in droves to the point where Parler became the number one free app in the Google store. And it looked like that was going to, you know, make a big dent maybe in Twitter's business. And uh, and so suddenly uh, all of the tech, big tech companies sort of got together and said no more Parler. And so uh, Amazon kicked them off of their servers they were supposed to have a 30 day contract in order to, you know, be kicked off of the servers. And they did it in one day, uh, aim for cause, but even for cause, you're supposed to have 30 days in their contract. So, um, and the cause they claim was stuff that was said on parlor. They thought was incendiary and surprisingly the same stuff was being said on Twitter as well. So yeah. I mean, it's just like, uh, uh, but but anyway, so uh, Parler literally being canceled, and that's uh, uh, kind of an interesting one for libertarians because you know it's it's not government canceling Parler; it's other companies canceling Parler. Although you know it's kind of a murky connection between the government and some of these other com uh, companies. Yes, true. Uh, true. Well, <clears throat> if I was a, a, a German resident during World War II and I had some Jewish friends that I was hiding out in my basement. Um, I wouldn't be telling my neighbors about it because I would expect them to go to the Nazis and tell them I was doing something illegal. Yes. So uh, while, um, you know, Google can go uh, cancel a parlor, uh, you know, or whatever they want to do, um, the, you know, it's still an abridgment of the of freedom of speech in that same way that my neighbor, I can't tell my neighbor I'm hiding my Jewish friends in the basement. True. That's a good point. I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. No, it's, it's, no I, 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 get, I get the point. You I see threw the it out there, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to stick or not, but anyway, how's that, how's that hit you? Is that, is that a decent argument, or, or is it all well? No, I think, I think it is, because, because there's, there's a merger, a somewhat of a, of a merger between social media and, and the government. Yes. especially yes. The democratic governments. So yeah, your point is relevant yeah. because yeah, th there's there's solid connections that are that you can walk yourself back to and see right there between social media and the government. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, okay. So when you see Parla being when you see Parla being cancelled, even though all of this is occurring because of the actions of a private private organization, yeah, you could see the backing of the government somewhere in the background somewhere. Now, there's also another issue here. These people have this protection, this two, um, uh, Section 230 protection yeah. that they're using, they're abusing. And Trump was trying to change it before, um, before, before the, um, when they had their stimulus relief, the so-called stimulus relief things that they were trying to pass uh, last year. Well, but these people are using this 230 thing and they're abusing it. And now yeah. they have used that, their protections, they have canceled Parler, a private business who, and all of us who, I was, I'm not in Parler, but I have family members who were, and they're all gone now. They're all gone. Well, These people okay. are protected by the government. Well, that, that's that's the thing about Section 230 is that it protects them from things that are said on their on their platform. Right. It protects them from, from prosecution. So, uh, you know, for them to have to police themselves in an environment in which they are, are no no they have no culpability is beyond me. Right, now I exactly. know that Trump wants has wanted to uh, get rid of 230 protections for the for these uh, people. In which case, then they would police like you. They would censor like crazy because if if you know you said something inflammatory and somebody got killed, they would be able to come back after the uh, platform. Sure. So we, yeah. Anyway, uh, enough of that. I mean, I don't want to go too far into two thirty, but I understand. <laughs> well, that's uh, the rumbling knucklehead uh, noise control segment. Uh, so at the end of our shows, we like to try to uh, uh, end with something kind of bizarre being said by either a, 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 po a public official or a um, you know media person. And uh, this one ties right back into the top topic of the show, which was the 
uh, Capitol riot that happened. And, uh, and you know, it's funny, we, we watched that riot happen, and I think we saw what most people saw. It was insurrection is what people were saying on that. I mean, I watched CNN's banner come across, and it was insurrection, you know, Trump mob riot and all that. Well, now, of course, somehow with the messaging from the left, this always gets tied back into race. I don't know how it happens, but it always does get tied back into race. And uh, uh uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris seem to be doing a duet on this one. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, said, we witnessed two systems of justice when we saw one that let extremists storm the United States Capitol and another that released tear gas on peaceful protesters last summer. That's what Harris said. Then Biden said, no one can tell me that if it had been a group of Black Lives Matter uh, protesting uh, yesterday, uh, they wouldn't have been uh, tr uh, they would they wouldn't have been treated very uh, very differently uh, than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. So somehow for Biden and Harris, this suddenly became about race. It's kind of odd because the whole issue of Black Lives Matter protesting was that police shot and killed or or uh, killed unarmed uh, black uh, suspects, I guess you'd say, uh, and the idea that. You know, there were several people killed here during this. I mean, and not alone that one person you mentioned, Tim, the woman from uh, uh, the San Diego. woman from San Diego who had been, yeah. uh, you know. So you know, it's just beyond the pale to me how what the connection is there. But did you guys have any thoughts on that? You know, all summer long, all summer long, they've been telling us a big lie about those most mostly peaceful protesters. Remember that? All summer long, we heard that. Okay, they were mostly peaceful protesters. They were burning our cities, but they were mostly peaceful protesters. But now, but now we have something here now that they could latch on to. Now that the big lie is has uh, uh, been laid to waste. Now that the Trump supporters have gone have gone into the Capitol. Now they come in and tell us we cannot talk the big lie. Now we cannot say anything wrong about the elections. So it, this big lie have to continue. It always have to continue. Because it always comes back to race, the big lie. It always comes back to race. Every single time something goes wrong in our society, these white liberals always like to tell us, oh, it's about race. We're always trying to victimize for me. It's definitely about like the, the division that they keep going. And that, that's also why I think that they did like some of my, you know, when I was getting my outrage culture backlash here, they, they, they didn't really, I don't think they really appreciate when I was like, look, I can go ahead and do like this public posturing, you know, basically what they're doing too, is this, this political posturing that I condemn these riots. Of course I condemn these riots. You know, I, I'm out there in my community doing everything that I can to, to help out. We're doing cleanups. I'm building houses with Habitat for Humanity, like making sure that we're doing donations to people who are affected by our wild, wildfires and stuff. Like, do you think that I will automatically, like I'm all in favor of the riots? No, but that, none of that stuff matters. I have to make a political, uh, take a political position on it and actually voice, I condemn riots and stuff. And I'm like, how about like, we just stop focusing so much on the division and try to like talk about our humanity and like start to exactly. unite ourselves and stop yes. finger pointing. Yes. It's, it's we very belong, infuriating. Yes, we belong to one race, the human race. And we should stop having to bow down to these people who will always try to tell us what lawlessness we should accept and what we should not accept. Right. Yes. Well, and that's an excellent uh, point to end the show on. Uh, we've come to the end of our time. And thank you all so much for uh, joining us again for our listeners. And thank you, Felice, for joining us as well on the show. Uh, uh, this was a lot of fun. And hopefully, uh, you know, maybe in future shows, you might want to guest again at some point. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, thanks so much. And, you know, it would be interesting, too, to hear about uh, your experience in politics after you've been um, in city council for a year or so. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. But uh, thanks again so much, everybody. And um, we look forward to uh, you tuning into our shows. You can catch them at libertariancounterpoint.com and Facebook at Libertarian Counterpoint. And uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you.